Welcome, welcome. We're going to play tonight 312. Giorgio's top is the pattern we're going to play with and fabrics. And just look at fabric pattern combinations and just see how much fun we can have. It is always surprising to me how different something looks in a different fabric. And so we're just going to play. And my goal is to help you see how easy this is. I, I honestly think this is probably one of our simplest patterns. It just has to be. There's no darts. They're built in. A princess seam. You don't have to raise or lower it. I can't mess up that bad, so no worries on that. It's a kimono sleeve. It just works beautifully. It's a, it's a knit, so you want a little bit of negative ease. I got an email from a lady that said, would you please do it in a woven? I did. So we're just going to play. If that's okay, you guys, we're just going to play. We are going to give away a DVD. We've got a little generous soul that wants to give away something she purchased for you all. And so it, we'll do that about halfway through. And so if you're not signed in, you have to be logged into YouTube in order. To, it has nothing to do with silhouette patterns or you have to be logged in through YouTube. I couldn't tell you how to do it, but it's just no, you have to be logged into YouTube. And we'll give a code word and then we'll give that away and we'll mail that to some lucky winner. The Fabric Always Wins is the DVD we're going to give away, which is exactly what we're talking about tonight because I am a big believer that you really should let the fabric tell you, if you listen to it, um, what it wants to be when it grows up. Um, I think there's a lot of times where we mix things that aren't necessarily as good as they could be. I was in New York a little bit ago and I was talking to um, Liz and for those of you who are watching the 900 series, Liz is on the first one and I asked her, I said, what about bad fabric and, and what happens when you have bad fabric and she said, I don't think there's anything as such as bad fabric, but she said, I think there's bad uses for fabric. And, you know, I think that's a really good point. Now, she's dealing with Italian fabrics, so that's why she doesn't think there's bad fabrics. But let's say just assume the quality is okay. I think there is a lot of mis, um, you know, the, the non-gelling of the fabric and the pattern together. So we're going to learn a little bit tonight, hopefully, answer your questions that you have, and just have some fun. And again, we're doing 312, Giorgio's top, and it is a knit. So we're going to start with some photos and we'll go to photo number one. So I, ever since I was little, and I don't know whether it was the doilies under the lamp or exactly what it was, but I just love crochet. Love, love, love crochet. I can crochet. I don't know how to crochet like a, a sweater like that. I keep saying to myself one day when I grow up, um, but I, I could, I can do a neck piece. So I found these neck pieces. I bought a whole bunch, so I'm sharing them with you. And Giorgio's top is perfect to put on a neck piece because neck pieces have um, neck shapes. They always follow the French curve if you lay the French curve down on them. And then all you have to do is change the pattern to equal the neckline. And that's exactly what I did. So let's just talk about this one for a minute. Um, this is a new fabric. We just put it up. It's 42... Um, let me make sure I'm on the right fabric. Let me get my glasses. So the fabric itself is 4368. And then the little neck piece is 4369. They're both new. They just went up today. And I just love white. I love white and I love it with a bright color. So I put it with these orange pants I had made before. That was 4238. This little George's wrap. You know, I just wore it over the shoulder. Didn't have to be like George's wrap, but this time I just wore it over the shoulder. So literally, I finished everything on the top. I finished the neck edge. I finished everything. I literally laid this on top and just top stitched. And just use the same color thread. You will never be able to say. I wanted the edges left kind of open a little bit here. So I didn't do that because I like the look. But on any of these more dense areas, kind of, that's where I stitched. If you want to, when you get up to the top, you can take it into the shoulder. I didn't even do that. I just wrapped it around the back a little bit. I liked how it looked. So you could literally sew it into that shoulder seam if you wanted. You could cut it off because it's all uh, fixed to where it won't unravel. Or you could just wrap it over the, the back is what I did. Okay. So 
very easy and fun to do. And again, because Giorgio's, Giorgio's top has a center front seam, it's real easy to make it into a V-neck and make it official. If the princess seams don't go over the apex of the bust, as in they fall closer to the arm sky, how do you fix that? Um, please don't fix that. That was purposeful. <laughs> you don't want your princess seams to go over the apex. There's actually a rule against that in pattern making. Um, the, the apex of the bust is to align the body to the pattern, but seams and darts should not go to the apex. They should stop around. Princess seams should go through the bust circle, not through the apex. So please don't fix that. Leave it like it is and promise you'll look better, okay? <laughs> All right, but thanks for asking. Looks like the princess seam comes from the shoulder tip. No, it just comes out from the side. It comes out, it's a side panel, but because there's no set in sleeve, I've got some, uh, you know, I had some variance as to where I had to put it. I didn't have to put it, you know, right at the top of the shoulder. So I kind of played with it a little bit. Now this original was a Giorgio Armani and I tried it on and I loved it, so I kind of duplicated the look and the styling of what he had done. And so it does come out a little bit, but no worries, no worries. I mean, you can always take off an ad and move that seam by simply redistributing it, but don't think it's supposed to be a certain way. If you just want it that way because you want it that way, that's a good enough reason, but it's not supposed to be that way, okay? Okay. So this is the second one I wanted to do. And this is, um, I was watching 2020, obviously, this is Elizabeth Vargas. And um, she wore this during an interview. She was actually being interviewed. And I just really liked it. And I, the minute I saw it, I thought that's Giorgio's top. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, not quite, but the flare and the asymmetric at the bottom, I figured, okay, this is one we gotta do. So we did. And so I'm gonna show you this is and you know whenever they're whenever they're not on they don't look you know they this is more form fitting than what it looks on this mannequin because this mannequin's smaller than I am um the one in the photo to me looks too tight i mean you know you've got horizontal pulls going all over the place not criticizing just saying you don't need to go that tight so you can see this one's got a little bit of ease in it but I really want to look at this panel. I want to have a little close-up of this panel. It's absolutely beautiful. Let me tell you this fabric number. It's 4330. Now what I did is I cut this whole thing six inches longer. I cut the whole thing six inches longer. And then what I did is I just cut it um, four inches shorter from one side to another and just made an angle. I mean, this is just beautiful. And, and I'm going to show you front and back because it literally is a panel. And I think the thing that is most fun to me about this is of course it changes by the colors that you put under it. So I purposely put a white under it so you could really see the beauty of that panel. But it's just stunning. It's absolutely pretty. This is a knit. It's, it's actually a panel. So it's a yard long, but I just cut in between the panels. You could actually put a little waist thing right here, if you, depending on how you decided to lay it out. I just love this. In fact, tonight probably was the hardest of all figuring out what to wear. <laughs> but anyway, the white is number 195. I just did a little sweater set. And when you're doing, it's nice to think about doing it under because like for instance with this, I did a sleeve because I wanted it to show off the color. I did it longer because I wanted it to go to the bottom. So sometimes I will make a shirt, especially for a garment if it's like see-through so that it looks the best it possibly can. And the fabric I used was that 4371. It's new. So the sweater set, I just lowered the neckline a little bit to match Giorgio, and then I went from there. And it looks great, yes? On this, I wanted to talk about hemming on this because I did not hem the sleeves and I did not hem the bottom. And it just looks incredible, um, just left alone. Just left alone, completely left alone. I hemmed the neck edge, but I did that for stability. But if you wanna, you wanna come in on that, Mr. Brett? I'm gonna come in right over here on this so you can see that raw edge. And at the bottom, you can see the raw edge. And again, sometimes at the neckline, I don't really care for a raw edge. 
It's all your taste, whatever you decide you want. Um, you could do a rolled hem if you wanted, but it just hangs so nicely. Usually at the bottom of a garment, we put a hem there so that it has weight. This doesn't need it. It drapes beautifully, it's dense. It's really pretty and it's a, it's a beautiful knit. Okay, so we got two ideas, two completely different. One, we're gonna add a little overlay to it. The other one, we're just gonna cut it off and make that asymmetric bottom because asymmetry is so popular right now that I really wanted to kind of take advantage of that. Okay, so let's go to the next one. And you know what? I am a real victim of color blocking. Even though color blocking is comes and goes and comes and goes, you know, this one's at Neiman's and it's not inexpensive. And I loved color blocking, so I decided Giorgio's top could be color blocked really nicely. And I started playing with <clears throat> why I like this. And I liked it, one, because you had a light and a dark and then a medium tone. So that's kind of what I think are components to making a color blocking successful. Light and dark and then a medium tone, whatever that medium tone is. So I decided this was my color blocking. And I did a light and a dark. I did the light and the dark together. And then I used a medium tone. I used my green. So this black is 4307. Did I say that right? The black is for, yeah. The white is 4371. I just put that up today. It's a beautiful white. It's not like a, a see-through white. It's really a beautiful white. A lot of white cottons you can just see right through. Both of these, this one and this one, they're not, you know, you just can't see through them. They have great drape and great, they're really beautiful. I did the crystals here on the sleeve just to kind of pull this black over. And then I did just a little touch of green over here just because I love the green and I wanted it to kind of have a little spin to it. <clears throat> I think a, any medium tone, a red, a blue, anything that's just a little bit somewhere between a black and a white I think would be really good looking. So I cut it a little bit longer but other than that I didn't make any changes to the pattern. It's really all I wanted to start with is showing you fabric pattern combinations and how you can switch things up. When I did the sleeve over here there's a short sleeve cut line on the pattern and I just used that short sleeve cut line on the front and on the back and put that together. On the bottom, just a little, I know you can't really see this down here, but where it's black here and white here, I changed the thread so that you wouldn't see white stitching on the black and you wouldn't see black stitching on the white. It looks much cleaner. All right, easy. See, just easy stuff. The whole goal is for you guys to just say, you know, I can do that. I can do that, that's a good, fabric pattern combination. We'll see how good I do. Okay, I want to go to the next picture. I didn't do this one um, because I, there's just, our stripes have gone so fast. We just put the stripes up, I think a day ago, almost all gone. So I just hate that. Um, you know, we just, the, the, they're 100% cotton. They're beautiful fabrics and they're limited. You know, I can only get so many. Um, this is 4363, and what you notice about this is the stripes are offset. And so um, instead of them matching all the way across, they're actually done just the opposite. The light is to the dark and the dark is to the light. So 4363, if you look at that, would be a great fabric to do that in. And then of course you can see that you wouldn't have to worry about matching the sleeves, so it'd be a little bit easier. You'd have a little bit of flare at the bottom, and then you could do a black fold over elastic for the neckline. Very simple to duplicate this look. I like it, I really like it. Okay, then the next one is the knit one, is the one I have on. And I just really like this. Like, I, you know, the one I always wear is my favorite, right? And I don't know how well you can see it because it's a printed fabric but it's got ruffles that are sewn into, I don't know how to kind of move on here. It's got ruffles that are sewn into the sleeves. I will go on this side, okay. And then they're over the regular sleeve. This is a really completely sheer fabric, like really complete, it's a netting. In fact, it's fabric number 
4340 and I used two yard three yards I lengthened the six inches because I wanted it to almost be like a uh, like a tunic the the thinking for me was that the bottom was flared and the ruffles in the top would be very soft the fabric uh, both sides work so if you saw inside the ruffle it wouldn't make a big deal it's got a little floral pattern all to it it's lovely it's really pretty all right, so let's look and see how we make a ruffle. And I know you know how, many of you know how, but we'll just review and make sure. So I measured from where I wanted the ruffle to start, which is a little below my bust. You don't want it to start at the bust. You probably don't want to go too low because it makes the sleeve, you know, kind of cumbersome. But it's 12 inches from the shoulder to where I started. And then I made it, you know, depending on how long you want it, you made it. Or no, is it 15 inches? What's on that page? I can't see, sorry. Yeah, 15. 15 inches, sorry. I'm 15 inches down. And then I went 10 inches out. That's how wide. You could make it narrower, you could make it wider if you wanted. So that's the rectangle that you draw to start with. It's the width versus the length. And remember that that part goes on the fold because you want it to go front to back. Easy enough. Then you want that ruffle to be one to one and a half and you spread and you open one to one and a half. That's it. You cut the top part on the fold so you have two of them. You could put a seam at the top, you know, to save fabric if, if you needed it. But either way, just makes it fun. Just makes it fun. I love this. I, I know you may not be able to see it as well as I like it. And then I've just got like a little black shell underneath it. And I love it. It's so cute. I'm working on the fit of this pattern question don't want to take the flare away so how do i shorten this top i'm short <laughs> um so did you make it i'm going to assume the answer is yes and then i'm going to assume because you want to shorten it that you made it and you it's too long so you just right at the waistline just shorten it right through the waistline right through here you won't take away any of the flare at the bottom and just figure out how much shorter you want it and just take a horizontal tuck all the way through the waist area. That'll do it. Easy peasy. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So here we have a very common look that is so positive. We all want to know about it. I've joked about it that this is the easiest diet in the world. It's called black side panels. And so Whenever you put black side panels in a top, you're only a third of your body. So it has to be the greatest thing ever, right? So what I did is I did black side panels. But what I did do is this is kind of bordering, sorry, this is kind of bordering on, <clears throat> we're going to start to into the woven department. Because think about this, I don't have to have, again, we're going to start talking woven and knit now. I do not have to have this whole garment knit. I have the sleeves knit and I have the side panels knit. Why couldn't I sneak in, depending on how tight it is on my body, but I could go to a larger size. Why couldn't I sneak in and do the middle panel on in a woven? And that's exactly what I did. I did a middle panel on the woven. This is fabric 4270. I cut it on the bias and I used 4307 for those sides for the, a black knit. I love it. I absolutely love it. So this step one in making a woven, the first thing you could do is you could make the middle woven. It doesn't have to be on the bias. I only did it on the bias literally for, for looks because I love plaid on the bias. But by all means, as long as that one panel and the front, I did it the front and back both, and then the sides are knits, the sides are knit. You have plenty of room to get it off and on. I did lower the neckline just a little bit to make sure I had enough to get it over my head. You wanna make sure, because you've got woven front and back, so make sure you can get it over your head. But it's just really, really fun and really, really easy. Okay? All right, looks like you have a high neck. Is there an opening? Looks like I have a high neck or my garment has a high neck. Doesn't matter, we'll assume it's the garment. Is there an opening in the back of the one you have on? No, but it's knit. It's knit, it's plenty big to get it over my head. Okay? 
But see, glad you asked, because if you didn't ask, you'd all just assume I had a high neck. <laughs> all right, so let's take a break and just do a giveaway, if we're all on the same page for that. The fabric always wins. I'm such a believer. I, over the years, you guys have seen, I buy the weirdest fabric ever, and the weirdest fabric ever makes the most beautiful garments. Um, once we're ready, we'll key in, and while you all are winning, I'm gonna tell you a short little story. Okay, you got it, you ready? Okay, so the and the word you're gonna enter now, this is only live, you guys. If you're watching this after the fact, I say this all the time and I see all these people who are watching it and they enter the code in. It's only for the live and it's already been given away if you're watching this after the fact. So the code is WINS, W-I-N-S, all small caps, W-I-N-S, only enter once. The robot will kick you out if you enter twice or more. So don't do that, just enter one, Put in W-I-N-S, small letters, and the robot will automatically pick a winner. But let me show you this. I want to tell you this, this little, it's not a story, but anyway, this situation. I got an email from you guys because you're always sending me good ideas. And this was an outfit that was at Bergdorf, Bergdorf Goodman. I think it's Bergdorf. Okay, and it's Jason Wu. And it has this, it was a beautiful, talk about great fabric pattern combination. It was beautifully done. Jason Wu, it was orange. It was, the pants had a little um, lip to them. It was a, a shirt that was tucked in, kind of like a, a little bit of a, a drape in the front of the blouse. So then I thought, I'll see if it's in Neiman's tour. I could literally physically go see it because Bergdorf is in New York and Neiman, it's, it's the same company. Neiman's is south, so they don't cross territories. Well, I found Jason Wu, I looked under him, and I looked under all the stuff he has, and I actually went to the store, and they have the exact same fabric, but it's not done the same outfit. Now, I know that different manufacturers, they are not allowed, to, they, and they don't put the same outfit in different stores because, the, you know, duh, that's not really smart, and. You know, they, they make, they, but they take the same fabric and they make different outfits out of it. So you can go to Neiman's and you can find Jason Wood. You can find the exact same fabric, but it's not near as good as the one in Bergdorf. Bergdorf is so much better. Just an FYI, okay? Or at least I think so. I guess Neiman's thinks they have the best one. But anyway, it's just interesting where the fabric, in that case, the reason I wanted you to look at that is how different those two outfits look, even though they're exact same fabric but they're completely different. One is such a, a masterful example and one is just okay. All right, do we have a winner? Oh, we do, good, good, good. Barbara Castle. Barbara Castle. Okay, very good. Barbara, congratulations. Barbara, if you will just send me your address, Peggy at silhouettepatterns.com, send me your address and we'll shoot that off to you tomorrow. We'll get it in the mail for you, okay? Okay. So I gave you that little rest now because we're gonna start working your brain a little bit, okay? <laughs> the whole goal is to try something new and different and try something that maybe we haven't done before, um, right? That's the whole goal. So I wanted to push this little woven area here a little bit and go into, let's look at this next picture and go into something that is woven. This is, so, Typically, if I find a pattern from a designer, this one is Giorgio Armani, I'll go back to Giorgio Armani and I'll look to see, because I know they use patterns over and over and over. I know they use them repeatedly because it saves them a lot of money. And they know their customer will never know because if they change up the fabric, you'll never see it again. I am not saying this is the same, but I am saying it's close enough <laughs> that we're gonna do it. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do it because I love how beautiful and simple this is and yet I want to show you the similarities, okay? So this is the one I did. Um, I did it with, uh, let me tell you the fabric first. Um, the use of a shear, that's a silk shear. This is 42.76. And so I want to go over the differences, okay? And I actually mapped out all the differences. So let's go ahead and pull up that next. Well, first off, I want to get proportions because 
for those of you who are short, you know that when you go in and this top cost how much? I'm sorry, I can't see it from where I'm at. I should put it bigger. 1900. 1900. Okay, and what you know is when you go in, even if you wanted to pay 1900, you go and you put that thing on and it, it is made for women who at least 5859. And if you're not, it, it just looks horribly out of proportion. So let's have first a little proportion lesson because you're going to make it for yourself. And you could certainly make it out of the most expensive silk out there. This I did as kind of a little playtime uh, to see how I liked it. And I love it on. It's just, just beautiful on. Okay, so notice that the cuffs, first off, the cuffs and the bottom come right to about the same place. And if you notice, I can't remember, but it's right, isn't it right about the crotch? It doesn't it cut right through that crotch, that hor that bottom horizontal line? Yeah, cuts right through, right around the crotch area. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I measured the little picture from, you know, the shoulder, just a vertical measurement, shoulder to the crotch roughly, on the photo, then on me. I found out I was four times bigger than the photo. And then I measured the photo difference, which was an inch and a half. Therefore, I found out that the side of that garment is six inches longer than the center of the garment. So six inches longer is what it is from here to here. And that doesn't matter how tall you are. That's a proportion that you can use no matter, well, I'm sorry, that will change if you're proportioned because if you're, I'm four times bigger than the photo, if you're only three times bigger than the photo, then the difference is going to be less. But you can proportion it to however you want it to be. Okay, anything, any questions on proportions, let me know. But that will give you the length of the sleeve, the length of this high part, and then of course the, the lower length. Okay, so from there, we're not gonna talk lengths anymore. So now we're gonna go to the next photo. And I want to show you the changes I did. So now I added length and I added length to everything because I, um, I wanted to make sure everything was as long as I needed it to be. And so the, the added length represents the longest point on the sides because it's really easy to cut it off. And I'm going to show you that what I did for me is I made it all the correct length and then I cut it off. Anyway, I think you really need to see the part I cut off. I guess that's not a big deal. But I do want you to see that the center front and the center back were cut on the fold. And I drew a straight line from the center front to the peplum and from the center back to the peplum, to the bottom. That now got put on a fold. There is a seam, a uh, center front seam on the front and the back. I nixed that. I opened the neckline up a little bit. That's all styling. It doesn't really matter how you do it, but remember it's a woven. And the things you're worried about with a woven, when you go from a knit to a woven, there's two things you should be worried about. Number one is how am I going to get it off and on? And how am I going to move? Those are my two big concerns. So if I open up the neck, I don't have to worry about how I get it off and on. If you measure the biggest part of your head, whatever number that is, you want to make sure that the neckline equals that. So I widened it an inch and lowered it an inch all the way around. And an inch is a lot, so be careful, go slow. And you don't have to go that much bigger than your number, you just need to make it bigger than what it is, okay? Okay, then I want you to look at the green lines. That takes care of the red lines. Remember that this sleeve is a knit sleeve because it's a knit pattern. Okay, so that knit, I'm gonna use my numbers and then you guys can you know, relate to it with your numbers. So my knit sleeve is 10 inches. And I'm talking about at my bicep. My blouse sleeve, <clears throat> excuse me, my blouse sleeve is 13 inches. So that 13 inches tells me that if I make this 13 inches, I'll be able to move just like a blouse. So I have three inches of difference. And if you notice, I have four seams. I have this top seam, front and back, and I have the underarm seam, front and back. So I take that three inches, I divide by those four seams, and all I have to do, and you can see that green line, it goes, it pops up three quarters of an inch. Not at the neckline, you notice not here where it starts. Here it stays the same, but as it goes out to the very end, 
it pops up three, actually I popped up three quarters of an inch right here, right around through the bicep, and then just let the rest continue to be a little bit more because it was gonna get gathered in, it didn't make a difference. But where the bicep is, that's where your mobility is important. That's where you need it to equal the blouse sleeve. And then notice the bottom, I did the same thing. I added there at the bottom. When I went to connect it, you don't want it to be as close to the body as what the knit is. So notice where I, at the very pitch of that curve, I brought it out, what does it say, two inches? That green, yeah, or the purple, yeah, sorry. It wasn't two inches, you know that, it's three inches. So you have to be sure you change that. It, it actually doesn't matter, but it's easier to take it up and you can't let it out. So for instance, if you put on a kimono sleeve and it's too low, you can always take it up and bring it in closer to the body. You can't take it away from the body. So I did it at three inches. And so from that purple line where it is, measure out, do three inches. And then you just connect. And where you connect it back into the body doesn't make any difference. It's all just added fullness and you want added fullness anyway because you want it to have a little bit more flair than what your body is. So see, it's really just so fun and simple to go from this what you have to this what you have. It's very easy to do. I just have to recognize what do I have in my woven sleeve? What do I have in my knit sleeve? What's the difference and how do I add it and where do I add it? Use all of your seams. Don't ever put all of your difference into one place. Let everybody help kind of thing. Many hands make light work, right? I got rid of my center front seam. I got rid of my center back seam. Um, I did a little fold over elastic at the neck just because the silk was a fold over elastic or a binding. It probably wasn't a fold over elastic, but it was a binding. So I went ahead and did a binding. And then for the cuff, you know, on the Armani, and that Armani was $2,000. If it was $2,000, I would probably use ribbing, but I have seen this at stores and I decided to do this. It's elastic. And literally the sleeve is just gathered right into the elastic. Is that cool? You wanna come in on that just a little bit so we can kind of see? The two inch wide elastic, you just make the circle the size of your arm. And I literally just gathered that in right into that elastic. And so what looks like a cuff is just a two inch wide elastic band, but it works perfectly like a cuff. Don't make it too tight, don't go crazy. Um, you don't have to make the circle first. You could sew it on and then do the seam. You could close it up in the seam. I made a circle and made kind of show on the outside and then I sewed it around. I think that was actually the harder way to do it. I think there was definitely an easier way to do it. But that gave the black accent here, the black accent at the neck edge, and then whatever fabric you used in between, you got this full flare from it. I did not go up a size, but I just cut a little bit extra on all of my seams, like an eighth of an inch on everything. And there's enough seams that that gave me several inches and that's a lot. Don't go crazy on when you go up in size, you know, or when you add a little bit, don't go too much. You won't want to go too much. It'll get too big. It'll get too sloppy. The beautiful thing about using this princess seam is even when it's on me, it's so pretty. It's so shaped that it's not just like this mass of fabric. So you can choose a beautiful silk or anything, and you can see that it just really hangs nicely. And then you just cut your arch and make it a difference. I did a rolled hem once I finished this because I just loved the way it hung. And that rolled hem to me was a perfect finish. Typically on a rolled hem on a, on a knit won't do well, but on a woven, it, it does beautiful. And so I just left it at a rolled hem at the bottom. And the other rolled hem I did, I kind of forgot to tell you guys, and then we can come back to this if you want to, was on the edge of this ruffle. I did a rolled hem on this netting, and it worked beautifully. I just really, really liked it. Okay. Oh, can we see the back? Of course. The back really is just like the front. This is your side panel here. You can see that. This is um, here going to be three inches lower, a little bit wider to accommodate. And this is where it would go down normally. It's already got the flare in it because it's like a pep, you know, it's like it goes out. So it already has all that flare built into it. If you want more, you can add more. Remember that when you're doing this, you're kind of styling and designing as you go along. You can always take it away. You can't add it. So I would have a tendency to go more rather than take it away to go less. 
And then it's just, again, the difference between those two for me was six inches. But use your little proportion picture and decide what it's going to be best to be on you. I think this, I would not put this with black pants. I think it'd just be adorable, like with a little pink pedal pusher, just something so casual and fun for summer. Um, a little red, a little blue jean, maybe just something to give it a really nice contrast so that you really see that flare that's at the bottom. That's really what you want to show off is that flare. Okay, how are we doing there? That fabric, again, that I used was 4276. The black elastic for the cuffs. I used the fold over at the neck ledge, and then I did a little rolled hem at the bottom. Just fun, just fun stuff. Okay, any questions? We had a giveaway, we did that. How are you all? All right. That's all I know. No, so, you know, I want to show you another picture because I really toyed with doing this and I just decided, you know, this is like not a pattern making class. <laughs> so sometimes I get a little carried away. I was shopping at Neiman's, I saw this. This is Dulce and Gabbana. Um, I just fell in love with this. I just thought it was so, maybe because she's laying back and just really relaxed, but I just really liked how casual it was. So I want you to think about this for just a little bit. There's three different colors fabrics. Um, and and I'm, let's go to the next one because you can really see some better pictures of it and what it looks like on. And, you know, I did my homework and looked it up. I just really like this top. So I started thinking about fabric choices. And you know how we have like the blacks and there's three different prints, but they all coordinate kind of together or the whites, or you could use the pinks because all those fabrics have a lot of coordination to them. So I was thinking you could use a pink, a white, a black, and it would all go together just really well. Or two blacks and a pink, or two blacks and a white, or three blacks, you know, whatever. Um, but all you have to do, this is gathers, is open up the top one and a half inches because that's the only place you don't have gathers. The bottom is already gathered and you could literally just put a running stitch around the bottom and gather it up and wear it blue sawn. You wouldn't have to change that at all. So it would just be the top portion and then you'd have to create, you have to change the vertical lines a little bit. So I decided that I was getting a little too complex, but it was too irresistible to show this to you. <laughs> and just sometimes my mind goes a little bit too far and my, my sweetheart always says to me, you think too much. <laughs> and maybe sometimes he's right, I think too much, but anyway. Um, are those stores getting stocked again? Oh my goodness, yes, definitely. You haven't been to the stores? Yes, they're beautiful. The clothes are just beautiful. Um, you know, I mean, I think everybody is so anxious to put COVID behind us that, yes, they're churning out beautiful goods. And I don't know that I have really noticed. I think I saw a little dip in Nordstrom's, but I didn't see much dip in Neiman's at all. I mean, they really kept pace, and I don't know how they did it, but they did some beautiful, you know, it's been fun to go into. It, with masks, it's been fun to go into. All right, so we've got a couple minutes, yours to ask questions, and let us know what you need. Our store opens June 5th. It is official. We are announcing the opening date. Hope that doesn't bite me in the butt. But anyway, June 5th, it's a Saturday, a week from this Saturday. I will just be open 12 to five and um, you're allowed to come by and, and buy some fabric. <laughs> if you're out of town, we'll even help you with hotels. No, we're just real excited. We're, we're gonna open up and have our first class the end of June in our little store. So we'll put that up on the webcast this week. I mean, put that up on the website this week. So you can, if you're local, we're gonna start with a pant fitting. So in our own little store, we're gonna have our own little class and nobody can interrupt us. Ah. Nobody can tell me it's time to go. It's going to be heaven, <laughs> okay? But we're really looking forward to it. We've done a lot of work. It's just a lot of fun. So we'll up on the website. We'll announce and we'll put the address and we'll put the phone number. We'll do all of that kind of stuff. And you just have to come by if you're local. You just have to come by and see us. All right, so what else can we... I've already robbed from the store. There was a couple of um, pieces that I was kind of saving for the store and I already robbed from the store and gave them to y'all. So I think that's gonna happen more and more, but we'll see. Um, the panel top fabric number is um, 4330, this one. 
It's 4330. It's a brown. It's beautiful. Just really beautiful. Okay. Where is your store? The address is 79, let's see if I know it, 7989 Beltline Road. Spring Creek Village, it's where we've always been. We've just been secretly hiding. <laughs> and we're at suite number 140. Now we're not gonna be so secretly hiding. We're still secretly hiding in another location, but this will be a fun place. And there'll only be fabric, everything else you can do on the website. Um, 7989 Beltline Road, number 140. Dallas, Texas, 75248. So that will be exciting for us. What will your store have in addition to the things on your website? The store will not have anything on our website, nothing. We have over 500 products. We're not trying to duplicate the website in the store. No, no, no. The only thing the store will have is fabric. It's a store of fabrics. It's not a fabric store. It is a store of fabrics. <laughs> That's it. 12 to 5, five hours on Saturday. It's only fabrics. We're not trying to sell everything online. You know, we would need way more space. And, and you know, maybe that will happen down the road. But baby steps. You know, we've got a massive amount of square footage that we ship out of. And um, we're not ready to, we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> we'll see. All right, so how is everybody? It's summertime, it's getting beautiful. I don't know if most of the country has had as much rain as we've had. We've had flooding, but boy, is the grass and the flowers are so pretty. Laura and I share a same gardener that helps us plant flowers and her flowers look better than mine. So I had to call my gardener and give him a hard time the other day that her flowers look better than mine. Her front yard's so pretty. My birthday is June 5th. Oh, we're doing it on your birthday. That's what it is. It's your birthday celebration. So happy you're doing the store. Best wishes for much success. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just am so excited about it that I haven't even thought of the logistics of it all, I don't think. I think I'm just having way too much fun decorating it and painting it and just doing a whole bunch of fun stuff. So I bought a, a Singer a table base. It's a table base because I wanted a table for the bathroom, but I wanted to have something to do with the fabric store. So I looked all over and boy, they were expensive, expensive. And I finally found one for like $50. Don't tell anybody I paid that less for it. But anyway, so we're fixing it up. It's just fun. It's just been really fun. And we've got these old sewing machines that have been given to me through the years. My sweetheart is giving me the uh, sewing machine from the 1800s. Um, we've got a featherweight. We've got the sewing machine my mother gave me when um, you know, my father bought it for her when he went to the New York World's Fair. So we brought in a little collection of all these beautiful sewing machines and we'll have those at the store. It's just going to be fun. It's just going to be fun. You know, I, we're just going to be there to sell fabric and just have fun and gab and have a good time. Can we see the back of the white top with the crocheted neckline? Yes. Okay, so here we go. That's this one right here. I'm going to take this off because that probably is not what you want. And there you have it. And our cameraman will, ooh, good job cameraman. <laughs> Can I use Monse Black Knit on this? Yes. I th oh, we're still done of it? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know. I think you're, and another woven for the front instead of the plaid. Now the plaid was, um, the plaid is 42.70. Yeah, the plaid is 42.70. Uh, we have quite a bit of that, so I know that's okay. And then the neck pieces are, are separately purchased. Does that help you? Okay. All right, so we have a wonderful dinner downstairs. <laughs> And it was delivered a little bit late and we didn't get to eat it. So we're going to go eat. <laughs> See, that's really why I was rushing is so that we could go eat the rest of our salads and sushi. Um, they want to see pics of the new store. Oh, that's sweet. We'll put them up. I should put I should have taken some before, like before and after. But um, I have a graphic artist. He does all of our PBS TV sets. 
he actually does, we have a very, very beautiful museum called the Ross Perot Museum here in Dallas. He does all of their uh, displays. He is an extremely talented guy. And he's just happened to be my graphic artist for 20 something years. And he is laying out the store. So he's, I haven't gotten the plans back yet. I have great faith in him. I'm really excited. He's doing the cutting table. He's just having all kinds of fun. And, you know, we've talked over the phone back and forth. And I probably will have it all tomorrow. But we will take pictures. That's a great idea. We'll take pictures. We will have a page on the website. It'll say retail store along the little top buttons at the top. It'll say retail store. And you can click on that. And it'll have the address and the phone number. You can call the phone number, but nobody will answer. The only reason we're using a phone number is so we can put messages. We'll be open every Saturday, 12 to 5, but you know, you never know. Something may happen, something may come up, and we have to close. So always before you come on that Saturday, you'll want to call, and we'll have a message. Yes, for sure, we'll be open, you know, this Saturday, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to have a good time. We're going to have fun. It's a little store, so we just have to... Be patient and have fun. <laughs> but we will. We'll take pictures. We'll put them up. And we're gonna wet, we're gonna broadcast from the store. We're not gonna do a sew along on the fifth because that is the store the, the first day we open. But I'm thinking like on the twelfth we're gonna have a sew along at the store. So we'll just shut down the sales for a couple hour for you know an hour. We won't do anything complex and we'll have a little sew along. So we'll take on a little tour of the store. How's that? We'll figure it out. We have to get everything ready and get all the equipment ready, but we're going to have fun. Okay, so happy sewing. We will see you Thursday on our YouTube. Other than that, bye for now.